O P. There are some more things. Don't worry about them. Okay. So once that operon is expressed, it will produce a messenger RNA. That messenger RNA will be translated by this ribosome machinery. You can see the green stuff. Ribosomes translate those messenger RNA, and once they translate all the messenger RNA, it will produce these one, two, three, four, five. Enzymes and having those five enzymes means that you can have this metabolic function and this thing can be converted into the product. So, this is like just to know about the things. Now, how many possible ways bacteria can control these? There are two ways bacteria generally can control its operon. The fun, first is called as repressible operon, the other is called as inducible operon. So, with the name, you might be able to guess repressor operon control the expression by keeping it in the closed state or keeping it in the repressing state. <clears throat> in the bacterial system, please stay with me, okay? It's, it's important. In the bacterial system, the O stands for operat uh, op operator. P stand for promoter and this one A, B, C, D, E are the five genes belongs to five different enzymes which are required for the biosynthesis of the five things. There is a protein in the system which is called inactive repressor here because it's a repressible operon. So this O means from where that gene is controlled, oper operator. This gene receives the inactive repressor and in the presence of inactive repressor, no RNA pole 2 can bind there. Means no gene, none of these five genes will be expressed. That is only possible if the system contains the tryptophan. Whatever we are studying right now is the tryptophan synthesis pathway. You can see here, these five enzymes, they eventually help this thing to be converted into tryptophan. So there is the tryptophan. If we have a lot of things, a lot of tryptophan in the system, that tryptophan convert this inactive repressor. Remember, inactive repressor means a repressor which cannot work. This inactive repressor, when bind with the tryptophan, it changes the conformation of this inactive repressor, converted them into an active form, and that active form can bind with the operator. Once it is there, no gene will be expressed, and that means no tryptophan will be created. And that makes sense because the tryptophan is there already in the system. So we don't need any tryptophan to be created here. Think about uh, another option. Once the system does not have any tryptophan, if the system do not have any tryptophan, it needs or it needs a biosynthetic supply, biosynthesis of tryptophan. The tryptophan is not there, it is consumed by the metabolism. This active repressor, when lose the tryptophan, it will become inactive. It will become inactive. Once it will become inactive, it will leave the operator, allows the RNA pole 2 to bind with the promoter and start the process of the synthesis of the five genes which can convert and execute this metabolic pathway and produce more tryptophan. So this is an example of a repressible operon. Okay, stay with me. The other example is inducible operon. The inducible operon with the name indicates that operon will work when something binds. Something will push or induce the operon. So here is an operon. There are three genes A, Y and Z. These three genes belong, they will going to produce these three enzymes. Enzyme 1, 2 and 3. And it is your job to put the names on these enzymes as well. Okay. So 
Oh my God, sorry. I accidentally clicked on the stop share. Okay, I'm just trying to move my controllers from one place to another so that I can easily explain it. Okay, here we go. So we have three structural genes, A, Y, and Z. And these structural genes will, when, when it is transcribed, they will produce a messenger RNA. These messenger RNA, when translated, they produce three enzymes. And these three enzymes can convert the lactose, the lactose, after these three pathways into a product. Convert the lactose into a product after these three, with the help of these three enzymes. It's a catabolic pathway. It will going to consume it. It will going to produce energy and consume the lactose substrate. Now, the thing is that if we have lactose in the system, if we have lactose in the system, the system has a lot of lactose. That means we need these three enzymes so we can use the lactose. We can utilize the lactose. These lactose can bind with an active repressor and convert that active repressor into an inactive version, entirely reverse than the other one. So in the presence of lactose, this active repressor is converted into an inactive repressor form. So it will no longer bind with the operator. It cannot bind with the uh, operator as long as the system contain, contains the lactose. Lactose is there. It should be consumed. If it is required to be consumed, it should produce these three enzymes. So the lactose actually allows these genes to be expressed by binding with this active form of the repressor, converting them into converting it into an inactive form, does not bind to the operator. RNA pole 2 is free. It produces three structural enzymes, messenger RNA, proteins, execute the chemical function and produce the catabolic and, and, and completed the catabolic pathway of lactose consumption. So once the concentration of the system, uh, the concentration of lactose in the system is decreased, you know, with the with the if this reaction proceed faster and faster, you consume all the lactose from the system. If the lactose of the system is consumed, this pathway uh, is going to uh, this will going to produce less lactose over there that will release or unleash the repressor. Without lactose, the active repressor will bind with the operator and stops the expression of the genes. Okay, so let's start. So these are two uh, different ways of regulating an operon. And you can see it depends on the product uh, at the end of the day that whether the genes are required to be expressed or not. So if a metabolic pathway is creating a product, that product it itself is a regulator. And that is the most simplest way you can control that how much uh, stuff you need to have in the system if the bacteria is containing is carrying the it contains a lot of uh, glucose the lactose is no longer uh, required to be used at that time so whatever the lactose is present in the system it can push or it can you know stop the expression uh, of that thing and uh, as long as the lactose is not uh, let me rephrase let let me rephrase okay stay with me once again sorry so, uh, in case of bacteria, we can see that in most cases, the product of the genes usually became the regulator of, the, of those genes as well. Here, you can see the lactose itself become the regulator of the uh, genes which are responsible for the metabolism of lactose. If the system does not contain any lactose, like here at the bottom, let me draw. If the system does not contain any lactose, what will happen? It happens usually when we the system contains a lot of glucose. The system is metabolizing with glucose and all these things, blah blah things. 
the glucose is there the system is no longer dependent on lactose for catabolic pathway for energy production in the absence of lactose the the repressor will be activated and that will bind with the operator and all these genes are not required lactose catabolism is not required and it will not be expressed once the system do not have source of primary source of energy like glucose and it receives lactose somehow that lactose will bind with this repressor and then convert this repressor into an inactivated version it will no longer bind with the operon the structure will free and rna pole 2 can create the messenger rna for the catabolic pathway of lactose so now the lactose can be utilized so if the lactose is there only the catabolic enzymes are required after that and that is how they can self control uh, its own cycle in this particular case okay in case of tryptophan it's easier in case of repressible operon it seems quite simpler and easier i'm sure you people understand that thing and this is a typical structure of the promoter uh, region of bacteria and usually it has an operator now you know how operator works it may be inducible it may be repressor it contains uh, rna pole 2 binding site and it contains cmp crp binding site they are associated proteins which help the rna pole 2 to go for the transport so this is the typical promoter sequence uh, of bacteria okay and uh, the most famous example we usually uh, share with each other about the bacterial uh, expression or the regulation of bacterial expression is the lac operon operon as you know is the collection of genes the lac operon involved in the lactose metabolism i have actually shared some of the things already with you but you can see once again and before you need to see and before you look at the actual thing you, you need to remember certain things in your mind that how it was discovered first in in e coli in bacteria okay so upstream of the lac operon there lies a lac operator and you can guess if there is an operator that portion is supposed to regulate it is supposed to bind something to regulate the gene then we have a lac promoter this is a promoter which is supposed to bind with the rna pole 2 and it is supposed to transcribe the things ji aman aapka question sir upstream nahi samajh aa raha mujhe ki kya matlab upstream operon okay 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 so if there is a gene that gene starts from here if this is the trans transcription start site and this is the direct direction of the gene everything present before that portion is called as upstream okay ye dimensions directions ke liye represent karte hain main aapko thoda sa example de deta hu this is the point a and this is the point b the point a and b are present upstream of the transcription start site it makes sense the point yes sir it does okay the point a is present upstream of the point b and the point b is present downstream of the point a so these are the words which people use to describe the position the relative position of the things on the okay so thank you they, sir ab samajh aa gaya okay good then there are lac i gene this is another type of gene remember a separate gene separate gene separate then there is the lac i promoter if a lac i gene is there it contains its own promoter called lac i promoter and you should know about the cap uh, binding site as well this is the place where uh, cap uh, usually a catabolic catabolite activator protein inducer it's an inducer catabolite activator protein binds okay do not get uh, 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 come to feel weird about it but this is important to understand all these things i am almost look like we are almost at the end of this lecture just be a little bit more brave than usual okay uh, and it's very important Pe people will ask you about it one way or another so there are there is a lag z uh, so a, a lag operon is made up of three genes lag z gene lag y gene and lag a gene abhi humne ye teen genes dekhe hain in the earlier picture same thing and these are the functions the lag z gene it produce uh, this enzyme galactosidase which splits or hydrolyzes lactose into this one this lag y gene it produce a permease which allows the cell membrane or which allows to pump 
this, it changes the perm permeability of the cells and pump the lactose into the cell. If the lactose is there in the solution, the bacteria will be able to draw or suck the uh, lactose from the system with the help of this product, permease. The third gene is like A gene, it produces galactoside transacetylase, which also splits or hydrolyzes lactose into glucose and galactose. So these and three things together make it possible that a bacteria can live on the lactose. The bacteria lactose copers in the receptor. One of the thing brings the lactose in, the other two splits it to produce energy. And that uh, energy a bacteria can use. But this is not required. It only required if the bacteria does not have its traditional food. I mean glucose. There are other things you will going to see on the next screen. The lac I gene, it lies upstream of the lac operon. So you, you know the lac operon now, these, made up of these three things. Together with the lac operon, there exists a lac I gene. Okay? So the lac I gene express separately and it has its own promoter called lac promoter or lac I promoter. The lac I gene encodes a protein called lac repressor. So the lac I gene will produce a protein which will going to act as a repressor and it is called lac repressor, which blocks the transcription of lac Z, Y and A genes altogether. Then there is another thing called CAP, you should know, catabolite activator protein. It's an inducer. It's a gene regulatory protein that binds to a cis acting DNA sequence. Now you know what is cis acting on the same strand, on the same stretch. That cis acting DNA sequence is called as cap binding site. It is called cap binding site since it can bind with the cap. It is present upstream of the lac promoter. When CAMP levels are high, cyclic AMP levels are high and increases, the, uh, 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 it, 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 when a system has high CMP levels, it increases the transcription of lag Z, lag Y, and lag A. That means the system is now able to utilize lactose if the CAMP level is high. Let's see how. There are four possible conditions. The first possible condition is that if the system contains glucose and lactose together, glucose is there, lactose is there, the primary source of energy, glucose is there, and the lactose is there. In that case, lac operon is not required because system can live on glucose. I will show you how. but we will see in the picture. Okay, I will show you how. Remember, if the glucose is metabolized, the system will going to have low CMP levels. Just, just keep this thing in your mind. Cyclic AMP will be very low if the system is dependent on glucose. Second, if the glucose is there and lactose is not there, it's very simple, lac operon is not required because the glucose is the primary source of energy. Although, because of the glucose, the lac or uh, the CMP levels are low, but the lac operator is no longer required because energy will produce because of out of the glucose. It decreases the level of CAMP as well. The third option, if the glucose is not there and lactose is not there as well, what will happen if the glucose is not there and lactose is not there? In that case, the lac operon will not going to activate as well. Although the CMP level is very high, I will show you how. Just Keep all these four conditions in your mind, okay? The last but not the least, if the glucose is not there and lactose is there, so the glucose is not in the system, the lactose is there, the bacteria needs to shift its metabolic pathway from the glucose to the lactose because the lactose is there in the system, it needs to activate the lac operon. The lac operon will be activated. And you will see how. Although it will, there is increase in the CMP level and now we will see how the lac operon will be activated okay so let's start last okay so diagram shows the four uh, culture options of bacterial conditions and we will see one of them okay so this is the structure i have already explained so there is a three genes the three lag genes lag z y and a and there's the lake lag operator this is the place 
where a certain protein will bind and will change and regulate the expression. Then we have a lag promoter, which transcribe all these things. Then we have a lag I gene. Look at this, lag I gene. We have a lag I gene here. So this is the lag I gene here. That should contain the promoter. So this is the promoter. The promoter and the lag I gene. It has its own promoter. And then there are cap binding sites. And cap binding site is supposed to uh, help or it's supposed to uh, supposed to uh, bind uh, with the cap protein, CAP protein. These three genes collectively produce these three enzymes and these three enzymes will allow the bacteria to live on the lactose. LAC-I, when transcribed, it will produce LAC-I messenger RNA and it will produce the LAC, LAC repressor. Where does the LAC repressor will bound? LAC repressor will bound on the LAC operator because it's controlled from the app operator. Okay, so should we start? First case, glucose is present, lactose is present. First thing you need to ask yourself whether the lactose metabolism is required. The answer is it is not required. It, it is not required because the glucose is there. Although the lactose is there, but if the glucose is there, the lactose is there, the lactose, uh, the system will prefer glucose as a primary source. But how? In the presence of glucose and in the presence of lactose, the lac operator will going to bind with the help with this repressor. I wish you were able to recall the earlier slide in which if you able to recall the earlier slide, not this one, but the previous one please remember this is uh, the same thing a y and z genes and the promoter region and this is the repressor and lactose binds with it once the lactose bind with it it will convert it into an inactive version okay now once the glucose is there as well as the lactose is there so in that case a lac operon is off but why it is off there is the glucose available for metabolism. The lac operon is switched off because the lac repressor is not bound to the lac operator. The lac repressor is not bound to the lac operator and cap is not bound to the cap binding site due to low CAMP. Once the glucose is there, I told you in the earlier slide, I wish you remember. As long as the cap binding site is free, The lac is not going to be supported. Means the lactose metabolism is not supported. And cap binding site is occupied when the CMP level increases. As long as glucose is there, glucose is metabolizing, the level of CMP stays low. So the cap binding site here, the cap binding site does not contains any cap protein means the lac operator is not activated and it will not going to produce any protein. In second situation, if the glucose is there and lactose is not there, are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, I will do it in the next It's very end. Okay? If you're fine, I can conclude it. Okay? You with me? Should I finish it? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But it's a little bit longer than the lecture. Aska. Really sorry. So, in the second case, if the glucose is there and lactose is not there, still the preferred thing preferred thing is the glucose metabolism and that will not allow that will not allow the cyclic amp levels to increase the cyclic amp level will decrease and this thing still not occupied okay but since the lactose is not there so in the absence of lactose in the absence of lactose the repressor will bind to the operator as well 
So there are two reasons which push the lack of operon to not to express. The first reason, decreased level of CMP, no binding of cap, and the second, without lactose, repressor will be activated and bind to the operator. Third case scenario, if the glucose is not there, lactose is not there, if glucose is not there, that means the CMP level will increase. When the CMP level will increase, the cap binding site will be occupied. Good. It's a good thing. The cap binding site will be occupied because in the absence of glucose, the CMP level increases. But since the lactose is not there, so that is why the lac operator will also bound by the repressor. Because in the absence of lactose, the repressor become activated and bind to the operator. Still, in this case, no chance of activation of the operon. Third case, if glucose is not there, absence of glucose will, will increase the cyclic AMP level and that will going to put the cap binding protein to this side. Good point. Since the lactose is present, so the presence of lactose will bind with the repressor and push the repressor away. So no repressor will be able to bind here. So a yes from there and a yes from here will going to activate the operon. And that will produce these three uh, enzymes. And those three enzymes will eventually allow the metabolism of lactose. So that is how it works here. The trip is very easy. Uh, trip you can you can do it by yourself. It's very simple. The difficult stuff is the the lag one. Okay. The trip is very simple. If the trip to fun, uh, you, you just study. Uh, it, it has five enzymes, five proteins. The trip to fan, the product is actually act as a regulator. It binds with the operator. These are five genes. The promoter region, their repressor, and their TRP. Uh, 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 trip repressor promoter. The repressor gene and its promoter gene here. So if the tryptophan is there, the system do not need uh, uh, to have uh, uh, to proceed with the, uh, with the with the mechanism in the presence of tryptophan. If the tryptophan is there, you do not need to synthesize tryptophan. Tryptophan synthesis pathway is not required. And tryptophan itself act as a repressor. So once the tryptophan is there in the system, it will bind to the system. Once it is bind here, it will not allow the operon to work and it stays off. Once the system is depleted with tryptophan, that means the bacteria is required to create tryptophan. In the absence of tryptophan, nothing is here. If nothing is here, that gene is allowed to pass. It will start, it will turn on and start producing the enzymes which are responsible for the creation of tryptophan. So that is how it works. Okay. So I wish you should be able to go through all these things well. And uh, thank you very much for all of you.